Like I said to, to somebody once, if you've got a secret and you can't tell anybody your secret, eventually it gets to you. And he said, what do you mean? I said, all right, let's say you have too much to drink. I mean, he's a heterosexual man. He's a big man. He's, you know, six feet between the eyes. Brain's like shit, but anyway. And I said to him, what if you got drunk at a party and somebody fucked you? He said, what do you mean? I said, somebody took you from behind and fucked you. I said, you'd keep that a secret. How long would you keep that a secret before it tore you apart and you'd have to tell somebody? And it it wasn't until I put it as bluntly as that that he understood the gravity of what it's like to be, you know, gender dysphoric. Gender dysphoric is the actual term for it. You, 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 not, you don't associate with the gender you were born with. And he, 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 near, he broke down in tears, this bloke. He said, you've had to deal with that for 30 years. It's a gold cost. In the words before monkey, primal chaos reign. G'day viewers. This podcast was brought to you by Koala Calm with a chill out drink. Sit back, relax, chill out. You've been working too hard. Who are you? What do you do? Today is probably one of the best podcasts I've ever done. It's episode 158. Can you believe that? Um, uh, it covers all things that I really love. Uh, for one, nerding out on drag cars and, and race parts and stuff and teams. Teams and and. And not only that, the importance of who you are. On this episode, I bring you Montana, uh, who I met more than a year ago, um, and she has the greatest story. You need to hear this. Trust me. I want to thank Greasy Belcher for dropping in on this podcast again. Also, uh, how about Stop Talking Drew? Are you there, Montana? And Greasy. Oh, yes. Look at you pouring your red wine. Montana, you beautiful thing. Put it there. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Yeah? Not too bad. And I'll say now, Greasy Belcher, you're back. Just sitting in, having a bit of fun. Yeah. And seeing how it goes. All right, now. Having to learn stuff. It's uh, What day is it today? I'm uh, pretty, pretty sure you're going to learn a fair bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Now, Montana, I, I met you about... Um, uh, by the way, welcome to the show. What is it, Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday in, mm-hmm. in beautiful belly heads. I met you maybe more than a year ago. More than that. Yeah, 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 a little, yeah. Bit, more, little bit more. And, and I want to say um, uh, I often invite people on this show when I find myself talking about them, you know, whoever they are. And, 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 and as a bonus, you do great things as, just as a bonus. But if I can get this little story out before we kick off, is that, um, where were we? The Night, night Quarter, the, the, night, ty- the band I'm in. Uh, absolutely, yeah, it was the Night Quarter. I was there with some great friends. Uh, the girls were, um, were out of control, jumping around. I've got video footage of them dancing in front of a food stall. It was spectacular. You're right. It was a good night. Yeah. And yeah. so we, we had some sort of gig. And next minute, here's um, uh, well, a lad mm-hmm. talking to me. Yeah, yeah. I noticed a little bit of um, eye makeup. No, I've got fake eyelashes, so that's that probably right? what you saw. Excellent. Probably. Well, I'm from the land of rock and roll. I love that stuff. Right, so yeah. I, I was interesting, like, oh, here we go. Here we go. There's a <laughs> – and, and you wanted to see if we could do a gig at your place because you do always host these big um, Halloween parties. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you sure, you sure can. Yeah, there's a story behind those Halloween parties, but, yeah, I'll let you go. Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right. Let me bust this one out. And so – Yep, sure enough, uh, we were booked at this at these huge Halloween parties, and in Madruba we get to the place, and and I said to, I remember saying to the band and some friends like we're going to do this party, and I think you revealed to me over the over the phone, you know, yeah, um, yeah. you know you're I'm not sure how we like what happened or, or you know what, whether I told you or not or what what went on, but yeah, I think you sort of got you picked up on it. Yeah, you gave me a little, some hints there. Yeah, yeah? yeah, absolutely. And and um, and I, okay, 
picture you don't know who is hosting the party and you're about to go to the party. I told everyone, we are going to go to like uh, possibly a crazy all out, you yeah. know, tr- That's what you're trans, how would we say? Uh, uh, look, uh, yeah, yeah, help me out before I start and embarrass myself. Yeah, no, no, it, like I love my animation. I love my animated props and, you know, there was, everybody, it was compulsory fancy dress. So you were about to walk into an Aladdin's cave of, um, of uh, uh, debauchery more than anything. You know, there was, y- you look at some of the chicks that, that go to these Halloween parties, they're just out and out tarts. God bless their yeah. souls. It's funny, huh? Oh, I love it. <laughs> you've any, love and it. it give women a reason to dress up as something. Yeah, just, well, that's getting, <laughs> that's getting to my story too. Yeah. So. All right, so, but I, I, I didn't know who you are. And if I could be blunt, I, I thought, oh, this could be like a, a, a full-blown you know, trans, I was thinking Rocky Horror Picture Show, like, um, uh, or, or completely gay. Like, I just thought, I, and I, but I was excited. He was up for it. I was up for it. <laughs> bit, of, bit of Priscilla, you reckon? Yeah, well, yeah. There's, like, there's that Aussie comedian, Jim Jeffries. He says, how many times have you been to a, a, a dinner party where you're sitting with your partner and then next minute in comes the gay blokes, like, yes, and they're sitting opposite. Oh, here we go, love. This is going to be a good night. Let's play Pictionary. And it always is. You know, like, they Why is it always the gay guy that gets his gear off? Like, and they're called... They're called <laughs> yeah, even the word gay is, like, a happy thing, you know? But, but if you happen to sit across from um, a couple of lesbian ladies, it could be, like, the most miserable night. That's what, that's what his comedy is, right? <laughs> anyway, but here's where, it, here's where the great story is in it for me. We get to this party... We load in and we're met by Gary. 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 Little Gary. He's a champion. He's champion. He's Great. Man. He's digging up the stage. I'm going, okay. And he's, he's wearing like fluoros, <laughs> worker bloke. And yeah. then every single person, and you've got a, like, a, like a bunch of drag cars in, in your huge shed. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've, you've gone to all out lengths. This place was themed with um, uh, like air, air compressed. Yeah, we had we've got a lot of props, things that jump at you and things that scare you. And yeah, I love it. Yeah. People, love people it. on the um, the door with with walkie talkies. <coughs> oh, we got six more coming through. <laughs> you know, ready but to scare the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might have to get really close. That's on that all one. right. They weren't yeah. supposed to be there, but they turned up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what I'm getting at is there were there was a like a whole party filled with. Oh well, you, visually you, you, hetero, you, tough blokes in the end of the suburb, and yourself. But with and but everyone respected you so crazily. It was like the greatest, most awesome thing ever. In in my, if I can bumble this out before before yeah. we get into it, here's here's someone formerly known as Steve. Yes. Okay, who's been a crew chief for some of the biggest drag teams in the country yes. and still is. Yes. Okay. Um, it, it, we can t- you and I can talk turkey about. Motor parts and things forever, you know. Absolutely. And and well, maybe you know. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'd, probably, you'd probably smash me with that. I with oh. with the knowledge though for what you've been doing. But anyway, yeah, that's all nuts and bolts, boring shit. Yeah, but any of us, any of us knows that when you're in things like teams and and race industry or anything, it's like a, it's like a footballer coming out like, hey guys, I'm not this, I'm this other thing, and and then. Like, wow, it takes big balls. <laughs> yes, it does. How about that one? <laughs> it, it, it's just my balls are on my chest. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's kind of... Um, and then we just did another gig for you the other day. And, yeah, and yeah. by the way, like I said at the end of that party, like it's great that people actually put... People don't put on parties anymore. So I was... It was you're a great person, which I forced you on to, to come onto this show because you've got a great story. Hmm. And mm. and a million stories. How about that? Yep. As I cracked my Kilkenny. Where are you from, by the way? I was born in a place called Paisley, which is just outside of Glasgow. So if you say you're from Paisley, they all look at you funny. So I just tell them I'm from Glasgow. So right, it's yeah. easy. Where are you from, Carlos? Oh, I already know, Grizzy. Where are you from? No, I'm from Cabra, Dublin. That's it. Dublin. <laughs> I need to get right in on that one for some reason. Dublin. <laughs> I will do. This is, you give me the cheap mic. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> right, so when, how long were you in um, Paisley for? Look, it's all a very distant past, but it, um, you know, 12 or 13 when I came out here. Um, it's been a long, long time ago. I'm old enough to know better now. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. But, um, you know, I've spent more time in Australia than I did in, in the UK. 
Um, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I've done more things here than I could ever do. Um, you know, the motorsport and, and even the rock climbing, I've, I've done everything in, that I wanted to do in Australia. I've never stopped. Mm. I've never stopped. So. But, um, you know, the, the best thing about what I do and, and who I am and, and, and where I come from is that the people around me are good people. They accept me, you know. And that was always a worry. You know, I said before that when you come out as transgender, it's like jumping out of a plane without a parachute. Well, the rest of that saying is you jump out of a plane without a parachute, it's like finding you have wings. You know, you can... It's a, it's a great thing. So, yeah. you know, you mentioned before about the people around me in my party, how they are from all walks of life. And it is true, they are from all walks of life. Some of them are some of the toughest people in the world, and or at least they think so, and... And then there's some of the gentlest people in the world, and every one of them doesn't give a flying hoo-ha of what I am or, or what I do and, and that sort of stuff. You know, like, it was the biggest thing in my little world to come out as transgender or gender neutral or, or whatever you want to call it. You know, like, I spent many, many years hiding it, and all it does is eat you up, and there's no real support for you on the Gold Coast. And I thought, well, bugger it, now's the time, I'm going to take a step. You know, it's the worst fight I've ever had to fight. But I tell you, I've lost one friend, and I don't really care, but I guess the the good in me is a bit disappointed by that. But the rest of it, I don't care. Everybody else is really good. And even some people that think, you know, some of my redneck mates, and I, I say that with affection, one of my redneck mates, I thought, for, for sure he's going to, He's going to have something to say, or I'm going to cop a flogging, or I'm going to do something. He was really good. And even recently, a, a, a big name drag racer who I thought would be very critical and have a fair bit to say, uh, turns out he has had experience in his family of, of a similar thing. And I thought, well, you know, this gig's not such a bad deal. You know? Yeah. You know? So. Well, I think we've got reached a time um, with all the information in the world that. I, I, it came to me as I turned into a, uh, you know, a, when I started to think for myself, go, wow, could you? I actually lived in Surrey Hills in Sydney, mm-hmm. for, which that's where the gay Mardi Gras is every year. And, and I'm from Logan. Like, you just didn't, I, I couldn't tell you before moving to Sydney that I even saw someone who was openly gay. Like, you know, mm-hmm. worked at the Logan Hyperdome, get act. You know, mm-hmm. but here at there, bang, right in the middle of, of um, my neighbours were gay. Mm-hmm. There was something really cool about it. Like the, it, it clicked into my mind that, that, that these people had to tell their own fathers and family. Like I guess, I guess it, it's, yeah. a, it's yeah. a big hurdle. It's a huge hurdle. I mean, I mean you, you're talking about gay people. Obviously, you know I'm not gay, but the hurdle is the same. You know, like it, it's, it is the same. Like I spent years and years doing stuff I didn't really want to do to hide from who I was. And it, it takes its toll. I can't remember half of my past because I spent half of it locking it out of my brain because I wasn't what I wanted to be. Wow. I mean, now the outside matches the inside. Wow. And it's happy days. Society used to scare the hell out of me. Now I don't care. I don't care. It must I could, feel great. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant. You know, I had, I had a little bit of anxiety there at the racetrack, which is ironic. You know, these are people I know at the racetrack, and they should be supportive and I had a heap of anxiety, and I actually stayed in a friend of mine's pit at the last race meeting, and I didn't leave it because I wasn't comfortable, which is sort of unusual for me because usually I'm, I'm, you know, full of my own importance and like to swan around and do my own thing. Well, that's another thing about you. What are you, six foot? I'm six, 184, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, that's part of my story is here, here is someone that I would not mess with at all, like a, and you know, do a you physically know? huge person wearing eye makeup um, with, you know, you've got a bit with of a good rat growing there on. too. Way to, make, way, way to make a girl feel special, you know. <laughs> huge person. Yeah, right on. Why don't you call me a fat bitch? <laughs> Those well, you know, photos were revealed. But you, th- you stop it. You, you, you think about it. You know, I, I walked into to a, a restaurant in Burley, um, Justin Lane, I love it, it's good good there, and I had a pair of eight-inch heels on, so that makes me about 24 feet high, Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't care, 
yet I was more anxious at the racetrack, dressed more.